Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the brand new Q-type add-in .NET 6 which makes it possible to remove multiple queues and consolidate them all into one. However, there's a very interesting trap slash feature depending on how you see it and I'm going to show you how to address it or fix it in this video. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapses.com. All right, so let's see what I have here. I have a simple .NET 7 console application and I'm going to go straight into the main problem. Consider that I want to buy tickets to a concert. Now, the way most ticket sellers work is they have different brackets for something that you are. For example, if you have an American Express card, then you might have priority. Or if you're a platinum member, you might have priority over gold members. And then gold members have priority over normal members. And I don't really think I need to explain it, but the queue is a data structure where the first thing in is the first thing out. It is a FIFO data structure. But you might want to have different priority for a certain property of that data thing you are storing in the queue. For example, if I am a user and all the queues are storing users, then I want to have different priority for platinum users or gold users or normal users. Let's visualize that. Traditionally, in C Sharp, I would have three queues. I would have the normal queue, the gold queue, and the platinum queue. So if Mike, for example, comes in who is a normal member, he would go ahead and just get enqueued into the normal queue. I would obviously wrap that logic into my queuing service and the queuing service would know that Mike is a normal user going into a normal queue. For now, I'm just going to use string because it makes it easier for me to show you what's going on. Then if I came in who I am a platinum member, then I would go into the platinum queue and so on and so forth until I have many users. Now, each user is prioritized within their respective queue, but they're also differently prioritized between the different types of queues. So platinum, gold, normal. Now I want to start dequeuing them and processing them. So what I will do up there is add a CTS or a cancellation token source and then make a while loop where while the CTS is not cancellation requested and I'm going to have just a small delay to help you visualize it. Just say one second per thing we pull out. Now that logic would look something like this. I would check first that the Platinum queue has something in it. And if it does, I'm pulling out that user and then printing it. If the Gold queue has something, then I'm pulling that. And if the Normal queue has something, I'm pulling that. So if I run this, then as you can see, even though they were queued in different order, I get Nick first, who Nick came in first in the Platinum queue, then John, who came then in the Platinum queue, and then Kim, Brooke, Mike, and Pogue. So that's how you would expect things to be pulled out. However, this is too much code. We have three queues and this humongous while list and it doesn't really scale because I will have to keep adding new queues for a different thing I want to basically prioritize on and add something in here. It is not good code. And this is where .NET 6 comes in. I'm going to go ahead and just comment this monstrosity out and I'm going to create the new type that we got, which is a queue type of type priority queue. So I'm going to create a new priority queue and this priority queue has two generic parameters. The first one is obviously the thing you're storing in, in this case the user's name. We might actually even create a user type, we'll see that. But the other thing is actually the priority, how you want to represent the priority of that user. And in that case, I'm just going to go with an end and I'm going to copy the exact same order right here, but instead of saying normal queue, I'm going to say, for example, Mike is three because normal would be three. It's the third thing in the order. Then platinum is, of course, one and then gold is two. Now, I have the same order now represented with an integer and I'm going to go ahead and just copy this while loop and do the exact same thing I had before. But the good thing is I can just have one check. So I'm just going to say if count is more than zero, then DQ, and I'm just going to change that to an item. Here we go. And I don't need the continue here. And I'm just going to print the item. Now, what you can do is we could have something like a record user. And if you still wanted the priority, the priority could be represented with an integer here or some enum, we're going to see that uh, and you could use it here. So you just saw that we lost the normal bit. If this is useful to you, then you would be able to somehow add it into your data model and retrieve it in the dequeuing process. But for now, what I have is this, but I want you to remember this order. What we have here is Nick, John, Kim, Brooke, 
mic and poke. I'm going to go ahead and run this with the new priority queue and see what happens. Nick, John, Kim, Brooke, Poke, Mike. I don't know if you remember, but Poke was actually dequeued first before Mike in the normal queue, but this is a priority queue. So this is the other way around you'd expect it. This is because priority queue doesn't actually guarantee ordering or queuing semantics within its own priority. So if you have a match, two and two, yes, Kim and Brooke just happen to have the right order. However, as you can see, Polk and Mike did, and then I'm guessing they happen to have the right order because whatever it's using for the default ordering to make it efficient to DQ is causing that to be the case, but you cannot guarantee it. If I wanted to guarantee it, then I would have to maybe change that to something like a double and say 3.1 here, 1.0 here, 1.1 here, sorry, this should be 3.0, and then 2.0, 2.1, and 3.1. And if I had that, then I could go ahead and then I would get the order I would hope to see, as you can see, Mike and then Polk, exactly as they came in. But that's not the case, and you cannot guarantee that it will be the case. And this is one of the biggest problems I see, because people try to replace multiple queues with this, and then they get unexpected behavior. It's very weird that this is a design choice, but I guess they went for something that is performant. So I kind of get it. Now, the easiest way to solve something like that, in my opinion, is to bake queuing time into the mix. And there's many ways you can do that, but the dead simple way you can, I'm going to change that back to integer so we can have uh, the same equal value behavior as before, is that if I just go ahead and delete all that, you can simply turn this into a tuple and you can add a second parameter being a long. And now what I can do is I can use the stopwatch dot get timestamp method, which does return a long, as we can see over here. It actually returns, as you can see in the description, the uh, current number of ticks in the timer mechanism, and it will actually try to use the machine's ticks directly, being always aware. So I can do this, and then I'm going to just set this to everything here, and just quickly close that bracket. And now, even within the same priority, because I'm begging in that timestamp, I can go ahead and just run it. And as you can see, I'm going to get Nick, John, Kim, Brooke, Mike, which was first, and then Polk, because it will be ordered using the timestamp. Now, it's up to you which timestamp mechanism you want to use, if you want to use the time UTC now or whatever. I'm just using this because it's very simple and very reliable, but it's ultimately up to you what you want to bake in. But you have to bake something in because the ordering is not guaranteed if you have equality on that parameter. And I'm going to take this a step further because you wouldn't really represent that status with an integer. Instead, what you'd probably have is an enum, maybe called status, and then you would have normal, gold, and platinum. So that would be used here. However, if you do that, and let me just quickly change this to normal, and this is normal too, and then gold. You might have already noticed where this is going, and I'm just going to run it first to show you what's happening. So now we've replaced everything with an enum, which is more readable and descriptive about what we want to represent. But as you can see now, we get Mike, Poke, normal, Kim, Brooke, gold, and then Nick and John, platinum which we don't want. That's the opposite order. This is because normal is actually zero, which will come in first, then gold is one and enum is two. Those enums have integers representing them. And yeah, you could go ahead and just say normal is three, gold is two, and platinum is one. And if you do that, yes, it will work the way you'd expect it to work. But then when you add higher levels, let's say, I don't know, titanium or whatever, then where do you put that in like minus? It's not really a nice experience. So what you can do is actually provide your own comparer. So what I can do is I can create a class called status comparer here, and I'm going to have that be an I comparer. And I'm just going to use the tuple here because I can, of course, you can wrap all that in a type, but I'm just going to say this over here and I'm just going to create the one method that it has. I'm going to delete all that logic. I don't need it. It only has a compare method. And the logic I need here is very simple. If we have a match on the enums, then take the timestamp into account. If we don't, then just do traditional tuple comparison. So if 
x dot item one equals to y dot item one, which is the statuses, then return x dot compared to y. Otherwise, return y dot compared to that's it. Now, the simplest way to use this is just go here and say new status comparer and pass it down as a value. But because this is a pure method and there's nothing state related here, I could as well optimize it and not have to allocate it every time I'm creating a new priority queue. So I can just turn this into a singleton. I'm just going to create an instance property and then a private constructor here and then just remove the newing bit, which is impossible now, and then just say dot instance. And now if I go ahead and I run this, then as you can see, Nick first, John second, Kim, Brooke, and then Mike and Poke, exactly how you'd expect it to work. So now you have the enum as well. And on top of this, like I said, of course you could use sort of a, a class type and use it here. And you can even use a class type as a priority as long as you implement your own comparer because you might wanna use something from that user type in your comparing logic to prioritize differently. This is completely up to you, but it's a very interesting data structure that allows you to be very flexible and only have to worry about maintaining one instance of that queue. But I want to know your thoughts. Did you know about this queue and do you actually even use queues in your code? It is something I've needed to use a few times in my career and when I needed it, it was very clutch, very, very handy, but it's not something I tend to use too much. Same for the stack, actually. But I want to know from you. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.